Lord be with you. Welcome home to St. Mark's on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. The lesson today is Jesus' feeding of the 5,000. But remember that, especially through the summer, we remember that we are pilgrims on a journey through this world back to heaven. The first part of our service recalls that. And then the Eucharist is food sustaining us spiritually on that journey. I will go unto the altar of God, even to the God of my joy and gladness. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and share the load. Will you let me be your servant? Will me be as Christ to you? Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the way by which we travel, show yourself and be in us the life that lifts us up to God our journey's ending. You, our brother and guide, living and reigning with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have bread, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. May it become to us the very body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We have wine, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. May it become to us the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Let us love one another that we may celebrate this holy mystery in peace. A blessing of peace, a sacrifice of praise. Holy things for holy people, thanks be to God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly 
minded for with blessing in his hand the Christ our God to earth descendeth our full homage to demand the disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread Come, Holy Spirit, the body of Christ given for us. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the recalling of me King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human vesture, in the body and the blood he will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food come Holy Spirit the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. May we take and eat these in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, wash me. Jesus, my Savior, dwell in me. Draw us in the 
spirit's tether for when humbly in my name two or three are met together thou art in the midst of them Alleluia Alleluia Touch we now thy garments And all our living make a sacrament to thee. Let my caring, helping, giving we may draw disciples be. Alleluia, we will serve thee faithfully. And indeed, we will. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In this time of continuing isolation, we are truly sorry we cannot be together in person to commune with you and with the family you've gathered at St. Mark's. Even so, we give you thanks that we can receive you spiritually through the healing power of this gift of life and through that same Jesus Christ, living and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As I said at the beginning, we've been reading through Mark this summer, and we've now reached that place where we hear of the feeding of the 5,000 people from five barley loaves and two fish. We can go back a bit to what we heard last week. You remember that the disciples have had their first missionary journey and completed it. And after this, the apostles gather around Jesus and they tell him all that they'd done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. So they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. But many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Now it grew late and his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and it's now so late, send them away. They'll find something to eat in the country and the villages around here. But Jesus answered his disciples, you give them something to eat. They said to him, 
Are we to go and buy 200 days wages worth of bread and give it to them to eat? Jesus said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they'd found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered the crowd to get everybody to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they followed the disciples' instruction, and they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And everybody ate, and everybody was filled. And the disciples took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is an important story. All four of the Gospelers record it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And as you know, that's not always true. But all four of them record this great scene. The only other recorded scene in all four Gospels is of the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus. This is an important story. But I, for one, have taken it for granted for years. At its shallowest level, actually. Oh, Jesus fed 5,000 people from five loaves and two fish. What a miracle. Yes, only the Son of God could perform, as I think of it now, a trick like that. I've learned to change my mind. And you know what the clue was? I was reading it some years back this Mar Markin account of the feeding of the 5,000. And I came across, maybe it seemed for the first time, the crowd sits down on the green grass. Now Mark's gospel is very spare, very spare indeed. Why would he mention that the grass was Green. Why not just say the crowd sat down on the grass? No, he says green. And that finally caught my attention. Just as it's caught lots and lots of Christians' attention over the millennia. Why would Mark add that detail in his sparse telling of the good news? Well, green around the Lake of Galilee, green is the grass in the springtime. Apparently it's not for the rest of the year. It's brownish. But green means springtime around the Galilean Lake. So this incident, this feeding of the 5,000 by Jesus, takes place in the springtime. And what else takes place in the springtime is the festival of the Passover. It was during the Passover week, Mark says, that Jesus was crucified. At the end of Passover week, in the beginning of the following week, the first day of the week, Jesus was revived, resurrected 
Easter day. So we have springtime here and people who read the gospel closely will understand that something is going on that has to do with Passover. What's Passover? It's the remember, remembrance among Jews that the angel of death passed over them, spared their lives when uh, they, they were about to leave Egypt once and for all and find their way to the promised land. That night, God killed all the firstborn males of Egypt, but the angel passed over the Jews and they were at that point ready to flee quickly Egypt. Well, during Passover, Jesus has his final meal with his disciples. And what does he say during that Passover meal? He takes the bread and he says, this is my body. He takes the wine at the end of the meal and says, this is my blood. And he refers to it in the context of the Passover lamb, the lamb that is eaten during the Passover feast. Essentially saying, I am the lamb. I am the Passover lamb. I am the sacrifice of the feast. Well, it's here. Notice at the end, Jesus takes the five loaves, he blesses them, he breaks them, and he gives them to the crowd. He takes, he blesses, he breaks, he gives. We Christians understand that to be the four essential parts of what we call the Eucharist, the Thanksgiving meal, which is descended from the Passover meal. He took, he blessed, he broke, he gave. Those four actions. And probably you're not noticing that when we celebrate communion, which we're now doing every week, but you might start to notice that. I take as the pastor bread and wine. I bless them both. I break the bread, that's the body of Christ. We were known, or sorry, the disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And I give them out body and blood, bread and wine to you with the assistance which can remind us of those disciples distributing the bread to the crowd. So now this story is becoming much more than, as I said, a kind of trick to show how powerful Jesus is, that he's the Son of God. No, there's far more going on here if we pay attention. There's more. Jesus has compassion on this crowd because he sees they are like sheep without a shepherd. If you remember Ezekiel castigating the shepherds of his day, the priests and the leaders of Israel, he says they're like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus is now tied to the prophecy of the Old Testament. Even that sitting down in groups of 150, if you remember Exodus, when Moses takes his father-in-law uh, father advice and he calls for people to assist him, he divides the, the tribes of Israel into hundreds and fifties, 
and then assigns people to be captains over them, leaders over them. Again, now we're back in the Exodus, which is part of that Passover story, right? All of this and more is going on here. We could take a long time unpacking all of this, but it's something we need to take to mind. Scripture may seem very simple on the surface, and to a certain extent, that's not a bad thing, but it's much, much deeper than that. Even, even Mark, who has the simplest and the briefest of the telling of the good news. And the more that we know what's really going on in the text, simple as it may seem on the surface, the more we come closer and closer to who Jesus is, truly the Messiah that has been longed for since those days past the Exodus. We begin to appreciate much, much more deeply this journey we're on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and we've now started to sing them because they are so important. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the full communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we pray. First, in adoration. We adore you, Holy Trinity, because by the cross of Jesus Christ, you redeemed the world. We bow before you in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the face of such great goodness, we confess to you those things that separate us from you. Hear us.
And we thank you that through Christ, you have forgiven us already. And you show us the way to make up our wrongs, not just to you, but to the neighbor and neighbors we have hurt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, you have given us through Christ and in the Holy Spirit the power to intercede for the world. Hear us now as we bring before you and lay at your feet those persons and situations that we know need your healing and your correction and your discipline. And Lord, as we intercede here and now, we do not forget the saints in heaven, those who have gone before us and are cheering us on on our journeys here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our thanksgiving. We try to be people of gratitude. We so often fail, but we know that you are faithful even when we are not. So accept our thanks for miracles great and small, for the good life so many of us enjoy right here in Canada. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we offer before you the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares and temptations of the world. From glory to glory advancing, we praise thee, O Lord. From glory to glory advancing, we praise Thee, O Lord. Thy name with the Father and Spirit be ever adored. From strength 
unto strength we go forward on Zion's highway to appear before God in the city of infinite day. Thanksgiving and glory and worship and blessing and love one heart and one song have the saints upon earth and above. O Lord, evermore to thy servants thy presence be nigh, ever fit us for service on earth, for thy service on high. Bless to me, O God, the earth beneath my feet. Bless to me, O God, the path whereon I go. Bless to me, O God, the people whom I meet today, tonight, and tomorrow. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 